the rocket, a craft that allows us to break the bonds of gravity at the cost of being able to blow us all to hell at any moment. In a basic form, a capsule on top of a cryogenic fuel tank connected to a ignitable exhaust pipe. Known as the rocket motor, the source of the controlled explosion, and from where the craft gets its name. With there being no analogue to a cobol at our disposal, there is but one thing to do. Stuff living ones into the test crafts. Now, however, this is not without its drawbacks. So Bob volunteers safe in knowing that as he enters into the hypersonic region, his name both backwards and inside out is still Bob. To start a rocket requires a thrust greater than that of its starting weight. However, this also means that as the rocket burns fuel, it becomes lighter. As it gets lighter, its thrust has a growing effect on the craft, expressing itself as an ever-growing g-force from the acceleration until the engine is throttled down or runs out of fuel. At these speeds, the craft begins to glow, heating up from friction with the air, risking melting vital non-shielded components. And he is as happy and comfortable as a Kerbal in a flaming capsule could ever be. Mission Control decides it is best to use what fuel they have in a braking maneuver to reduce the craft's velocity and the risk of overheating on the way back down. With the fuel spent, the drive stage is detached, exposing the capsule's backside to the elements, but also making the craft lighter, giving drag more of a chance to slow the craft down. It is during this time that our pilot Bob has spare time, with no checklists and no ability to control his craft during the descent. Bob has time to rethink his decision of being a test pilot and why the devs decided to test buoyancy after the first flight instead of before. Starts to weigh on his little mind. Feeling a weight being lifted as the parachute opens to ensure his survival, it is immediately replaced by a momentary shock of 14 Gs. No one can say if the shock of 14 times his body weight or his possible impending death from impact is worse. But on this flight, Bob will not be testing the latter. It is decided that a sample from the ocean is required. So while waiting for the recovery team, Bob steps out for a little swim, confirming that his suit is at least waterproof. However, if it was not, we would be in a spot of right trouble, seeing that he is sealed in and at the moment unable to remove his helmet. With a new realm of data collected, the engineering team set themselves to the task of developing a heat shield device to allow a craft to survive the extreme heat. In the next sequence of flights, we must now use the newly obtained Science Junior, obtaining science that is used to buy new components. The next few flights should give us enough science to start to unlock the orbital survey scanner modules. Those modules will allow us to map our world and better understand where best to send our scientists to extend the bounds of our scientific knowledge. With the fuel depleted and on a re-entry course, there is not much time to carry out the science experiments. It is at this moment in the flight the pilot realizes a horrible mistake. The engineers attached a stabilization wheel instead of a science junior module, basically making this mission a complete waste of time. For the next flight, we will need to check the part ID number and not just its basic geometric shape. The most we will be doing this time is making sure the heat shield system works. But at least we will have a very stabilized descent. Looks like this capsule was lucky and was supplied with a non-bug parachute. So once again we lift off again and again, and again all we do is launch. You know what, let's just get to the in-space part. After separating from the drive stage, a pitch-over maneuver must be performed, not only to get our heat shield pointed in the right direction, but also so our curveball can be filmed right side up instead of upside down, and get that science we missed last launch. During any descent, anything can go wrong, parts can fail, and pilots can become distracted. If any of these happen, it can mean the loss of craft and crew, or worse yet, loss of collected science. With the heat shield proven to work, 
it comes down to the parachute, one that only seems to open on Wednesdays during the equinox, and then only if you are facing east and ask pretty please. As some parachutes either refuse to open or only eject a tiny puff of smoke. We are looking into the supplier to find a list of all affected chutes. Then we can remove them from use. However, with all of these issues, our kobolds fall back on their fortitude and desire to explore, and contemplate if the devs made parts stronger because they knew the parachutes sometimes don't work. As for myself, surviving a 960 km per hour impact with the water is a little sus. But our cameraman is really starting to get some nice shots. If we paid him, he would be worth every penny. So please like, share and subscribe. On this flight, mission control pushes further, gathering science from both low and high orbits, along with testing that the spacesuits and EVAs are viable. Carbol engineers found that chocolate and marshmallow encased in a graham cracker crust makes for the perfect heat shield. While the marshmallows make for a good shock absorbent, the melting chocolate plugs any holes and holds everything together. While the graham crackers air pockets makes for the perfect insulator, and it also ensures that there is always a tasty snack for the recovery team. But only if the parachute actually opens. It is time to push for a proper orbit. Launching with an extra stage, it will allow for enough fuel to make it into suborbital flight, which can be used to perform an orbital insertion burn. Without any fuel transfer lines available, this flight is forced to burn side engines as boosters. This raises the firing of the main engine from sea level to 10 kilometers, greatly improving its thrust to weight ratio, as well as its delta V. While communicating with mission control on possible camera angles, the burn was never shut off, leaving our pilot in a classic position for a Kerbal, being left in orbit at least until a rescue mission can be planned. Here is where our Kerbal's ability to require no food or water saves mission control's bacon, leaving Tim with nothing but time to contemplate the abilities of those in mission control. This puts the agency into somewhat of a flurry of random horrible ideas, even wearing the trench mascot, Mr. Peanut. Tune in next time to see if Valentina and the Black Widow can reach him in time before his craft can be destroyed by the mysterious Kraken God. And don't forget to like and subscribe and show you want more content like this.